I've had a number of requests from viewers asking me to show them how to jack up and safely support a Mercedes-Benz when working on either the front suspension or the rear suspension. Now, I have this car in the shop today and I'm doing some front suspension work, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to show you how I jack up and support a car. Now, right off the bat, I want you to think safety, and I'm really paranoid. I should tell you a little story. When I was 13 years old, I went out and bought my first car. It was a 28 Model A Ford, and I was jacking up the rear end with one of those, you know, post jacks that they had back then, and that jack flew out and hit me right here, and I still have a scar above my right eye. So I am very paranoid. You know, this was years ago, almost 60 years ago. <laughs> And I still am very careful about jacking up, supporting a car, particularly when I'm working underneath it. And I want to stress the importance of this to you, my viewers. Think safety when you're working around a jack and jack stance. So in this video, I'm just going to show you a number of things that I do and some things I've learned along the way that might help you get your car jacked up and safely supported when you're working on it yourself. It's highly recommended that you get a good hydraulic floor jack similar to this one and a set of jack stands as you see here. You take your floor jack and modify it with a couple of blocks of plywood. Now this has to be good quality multi-ply plywood, not the cheap stuff. And cut some six inch or four inch squares so that these pieces of plywood can sit right here. This is going to protect the underside of the car it's also going to help to keep it from slipping. And that's real important. I love to use wood between the jack head and the car body. That's something I learned a long time ago. That can really reduce some of the slippage problems because when you jack up on a part on the car, it's going to kind of embed itself in the plywood. The same thing's going to happen here on these, these teeth and this head. They're going to kind of seat down into the plywood. So this is something that you should do. And then on the top of the jack stand, you should put something to protect that from scratching the car and also from slipping. And I like to use this reinforced rubber radiator hose that I cut to length and then slit down the middle. You can see how that just sits right on top of the jack stand and it firmly holds this in place. Before you ever jack up the car, you want to loosen the lug bolts. This is something a lot of people forget about. They'll get the car jacked up in the air and the front wheel just spins when they're trying to loosen the bolts. If you don't have an air impact wrench, that could be a problem. So I recommend that you loosen the lug bolts using a long breaker bar like this before you start jacking the car off the ground. If these bolts are on real tight, which you may find is the case if they've been tightened at a tire shop, you need to use your foot. Don't break your arm or your back doing this but get this lug wrench in position so that you can push down with your foot to break those bolts free that are really hard to get loose. Now, once you get the bolts loose, you don't have to take any of them out. You can begin jacking up the car. And I roll the jack under the jack point on these W124 chassis. You can see here there's a little rubber bumper underneath there and you could slide the plywood right underneath that rubber bumper and start jacking the car up. Now, if you have the older model that doesn't have a pad like that, you can put a big bolt in the jack hole and use the floor jack to jack up the car. Now, we have those bolts available on my website if you don't have something that'll work for your particular older Mercedes. Now, once you get the car up in the air, you take the jack stand and you move it underneath. You'll see the subframe reinforcement part of the unibody right behind the front suspension. Don't put the jack stand on the floor pan of the car. You want to find that reinforced member there that you see here and then slide the jack stand in position so that as you lower the car, it's firmly on top the jack stand. Now at that point, and use something like a speed wrench. If you don't have an air impact wrench, you can use a speed wrench like you see here to spin those lug bolts out. Now notice here that I have a pin holding the wheel in place. I've gotten all the lug bolts removed, but I've got this pin. And I recommend that you definitely have one of these real removal alignment pins 
because even with all the bolts out, look at how nice that is. The wheel's just sitting there. I don't have to worry about it falling on my foot. And once I get the tools out of the way, I can just come in and, and lift the tire off and get it out of the way. So these wheel mounting pins, like this one, this is the one we sell on my website, it's stainless steel, but these are amazing. And then of course, when you go to put the tire on, you know, setting this up in top position and putting the tire on it makes it very easy to get those lug bolts lined up and started. Now there's one final comment I wanna make about this situation here. If you have the car up on jack stands like this and you're gonna be working, let's say in this area, I recommend you take the floor jack and move it right back underneath the position that you originally jacked on and just move it up a little bit until it's under the car and then you can move the jack out of the way. You could start working here and this is your redundancy right here. Not only do you have a jack stand under the car, you've got a jack as your backup in case something happens to the jack stand. I hope you found those tips helpful and I hope you always think safety, okay, when you're working on your own Mercedes-Benz. Now later on, I'm gonna go back there to the rear end and I'm gonna replace the rear shocks. And when I do that, I'll show you some tips to jacking up and supporting the rear, which is a little bit different from the front, even though you're going to use the same safety precautions.